David? What? Which hand do you brush your teeth with? My right hand, of course. Why? Nothing. I usually brush mine with a toothbrush and Listerine toothpaste. Oh, what a funny little man you are. <laughs> Listerine Antiseptic and Listerine Toothpaste present America's favorite family comedy, The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family. Here is Ozzy, who plays the part of Ozzy Nelson, and of course his lovely wife Harriet as Harriet Nelson. The older of the Nelson boys, David, appears as David Nelson, and his younger brother, the irrepressible Ricky, played by Ricky Nelson. The Nelson's next door neighbor, Thorny, is played by Don DeFore. What do you mean you're not going, David? What does it sound like I mean? Sounds like you mean you're not going. Okay, then what's your question? What do you mean you're not going, David? <laughs> I'm not going. Okay. And that's final. Okay, okay. That's the way you feel. I'll give you one more chance. <laughs> that's a lot, but I'm not going. I happen to have other obligations. Big words. I promised to help a couple of friends of mine. What about me? I'm your brother, you know. Don't get maudlin. I suppose you think I don't know what that means. Okay, what does it mean? Just for that, you can look it up yourself. I promised to help a couple of friends of mine. Guy can have a couple of friends in this world, can he? Oh, yeah? If it wasn't for me, you'd be an only child. <laughs> Ricky's getting a little hot under the collar here. We're gonna go to the movies this afternoon. Well, that's fine. Yeah, but now Dave has given me some song and dance about not being able to go. Oh, what's the matter, Dave? Well, for one thing, I don't have enough money. Well, what happened to your allowance? Did you spend all of it? Not exactly. I loaned it to this guy at school. If you wanted to give it away, you should have told me. <laughs> I didn't give it away. It was a loan. What'd you do, lend it to some pal of yours? Not especially, Pop. Just one of the guys in the class. Well, gee, that's a shame. Now you don't have any money to go to the movies with, do you? No, sir. Well, I tell you what I'll do. I think I can make a little exception and give you an advance on your allowance. How much do you need? Never mind, Pop. That's okay. No, no, don't worry about it. You can pay me back. Honest, Pop, I don't want it. What's the matter with you, David? You got rocks in your head? <laughs> you let David handle his own financial affairs. I sure wouldn't let him handle mine, boy. <laughs> well, are you sure you don't want this money, Dave? No, thanks, Pop. Honest. I can't go to the movies anyway. Well, why not? I have to make some drawings for a friend of mine in science class. This guy has more friends. Well, look, Dave, the movies don't start until this afternoon. Why don't you do the drawings this morning? I don't think I can finish in time, Pop. It's an awful lot of work. Gee, this is a shame. Why can't this boy do his own homework? Because this boy happens to be a girl. <laughs> he is not. Not unless you call the captain of last year's football team a girl. Not to his face, I wouldn't. <laughs> It's awful nice of you to do these things for people, but, gee, it's a shame to have you miss out on the movies on account of it. Well, that's okay, Pop. I don't mind. He's going to be a neat picture, too, boy. Well, I better get upstairs and get going on this stuff. Well, if you change your mind, let me know, Dave. Well, thanks, Pop. Do you know where your mother is, Rick? She's out in the kitchen. Oh. Are you sure? Yeah, but the table's all cleaned up and the dishes are in the dishwasher. Oh. Gee, that's a shame. <laughs> well, I think I want to see about something anyway. Harriet! I'm in here! Oh, there you are. I've been looking all over for you. Yeah, the dishes are all finished, thank you. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, you needn't look so unhappy about it. There's nothing to it anymore. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not exactly unhappy. To tell you the truth, I am a little concerned about David, though. He hasn't done anything wrong, has he? Oh, no, 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 nothing like that. It's just that, well, I think he's being taken advantage of. Oh, I know what you mean. That Ricky can be a fast talker, but David knows how to handle it. No, no, it isn't Ricky. Oh, who is it then? Well, I know the boys aren't doing it intentionally, but David just doesn't know how to say no to people. Well, what are you talking about? Oh, it's one thing after another. Now, you take this morning, for instance. He has no money because he loaned one of his friends his entire allowance... He can't go to the movies because he promised some other kid he'd do his homework for him. Well, that sounds very nice to me. Personally, I think the whole world could stand a little more friendliness and generosity these days. Well, so do I, and I'm glad David's that kind of a boy. The point I'm trying to make is, oh, that generosity, like everything else, has its limitations. 
It's got to learn to use a little judgment and common sense. I want him to be generous, too. But I don't want him to be a doormat and have people walk all over him. Oh, dear, I hardly think it's that serious. Besides, maybe he likes doing things for his friends like this. You know, everybody likes to be well-liked. Mom. Yes, dear? You know where my Oscar jacket is? Well, yes, it's right here on the chair. Oh, yeah, thanks. You going out? Well, just for a couple minutes. I'll be right back. I say, Dave. Yes, sir? Uh, could I have a little talk with you, son? Oh, well, sure, Pop. Oh, uh, go ahead. I'll walk you to the door. I don't quite how to begin this, Dave. Well, have I done something wrong? Oh, no, no. At least not to anybody but yourself. It's just what we were talking about before. See, it's a wonderful thing to do nice things for people, but you can overdo that the same as anything else. Yeah, I know what you mean, Pop. See, lots of times people ask you to do things for them, and you may not want to. In fact, you may feel it's an imposition, but yet you just don't know how to say no. Yeah, but sometimes it's pretty difficult. Well, sure it is, but you've just got to do it, son, or else people will be taking over your whole life for you. Now, you take this afternoon, for instance. I know you want to go to the movies, and yet you've got to stay home because you've promised to do this other boy's homework for him. Well, what could I do, Pop? He asked me, and he's a friend of mine. Well, you just could have said very politely, I'm sorry, but I have other plans. You could have been very courteous, but still be firm. See, you've just got to learn to say no. I guess you're right, Pop. You try and remember that next time, will you, son? It's nice to be considerate of other people, but you've got to think of yourself, too. Here, Pop, why don't you take this apple? Well, no, I have an apple here. Well, mine's so much bigger than yours. <laughs> yeah, but that's yours. You keep it, Dave. Okay, Pop. Well, I'll see you later. I have to go down to the store and get some special drawing paper. So long, Pop. So long, Dave. <laughs> coming over to see you. Well, good for you, Thorny. What's on your mind? Guess what? We have little house guests visiting us for a few days. Oh, good. Yeah, little niece of Catherine's. In fact, Catherine just picked her up on the train a few hours ago. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Yep, she's going to spend the weekend. Lovely little girl, too, Oz. About 14, I would say. Hey, that's just about Will's age. How does he like the idea? Well, unfortunately, he left last night for an overnight hiking trip. Seems he had it planned for several weeks. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, the whole thing was a sort of a surprise. Uh, I didn't realize she was Will's age. Naturally, we wanted to have a good time while she's here. Oh, naturally. So when she received the invitation to the party last night, well, we were pretty disappointed. A uh, party? Yeah, it seems Claire Randolph is giving a party for her daughter, and she called Catherine to invite little Shirley. Oh, oh, oh that's yeah. That's the little girl's name. Well, that sounds wonderful. Yeah, except that she can't go alone, being a complete stranger here and all. They sort of figured Will was going to take her. Oh, yeah. Too bad. So, you can see the spot we're in. She's a very nice little girl, Oz. Very well-mannered. Oh, yeah, I'm sure she is. I uh, sort of thought you might have a suggestion. Hmm. It'd be awfully nice if she could go to the party. Hmm. Of course, if she had an escort, she could go. Now, if we could think of some young chap, about 14 or 15, very clean-cut, well-mannered, agreeable, and very popular with the rest Just of the say, kids... Say, pardon me a second, Thorny. Uh, what about David? He's... I a... accept. <laughs> I should accept. <laughs> Little Shirley will be delighted to go to the party with David. Well, thank you, Thorny. On behalf of David, may I say, he'll be very, very delighted to escort Little Shirley to the party. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Oh, forget it. After all, if you can't do a favor for a pal... Oh, you're a real pal, Oz. Thanks a million. You bet. Oh, incidentally, uh, thank David for me, too, will you? Hi, Pop. Oh, hi, boys. Got some interesting news for you, Dave. Oh, good. It seems a little niece of Mr. Thornberry's just arrived in town this morning. Oh, that's nice. No, no, well, you hear this now. I understand that she's just about your age and a very cute little girl. Uh huh. Everything ready for the day. Well, sir, here's the interesting part. She's been invited to a party at Mary Randolph's, and I understand she doesn't have an escort. Where's Will? Well, he's gone on an overnight camping trip or something, so he can't take her. Well, sir, <laughs> Mr. Thornberry and I have been thinking the thing over, and we've decided that we know another young lad who would fit the bill exactly. He's a very well-mannered boy and a popular young fellow to boot. I'd be happy to take her, Pop. <laughs> Ricky, please, I'm talking to David. Gee, for a guy who's a popular young fellow to boot, I sure get kicked around. <laughs> More at Dave's age. 
Well, how about it, Dave? How about what, Pop? Well, Mr. Thornberry and I would consider it a great favor to us if you would agree to escort this charming little lady to the dance. You hear me, Dave? Yes, sir, I heard you. I was just thinking about something. Uh, thinking about what, David? What you said before. What, what I said before? Yes, sir. I'm awful sorry, but I have other plans. <laughs> you mean you don't want to go? Well, David, this sounds like it'll be a lot of fun. Well, thanks a lot, Pop, and thank Mr. Thornberry for me, too, but my answer is still no. Well, don't, don't you even want to think it over? No, thanks, Pop. And, gee, thanks a lot for the swell advice, Pop. Oh, that's okay, son. Any time at all. In business, he's pleasant to have around. In his social life, he's always in demand. In private, the sweetest girl in the world thinks he's perfection. Yes, he's a nice guy to be near because he's smart. He doesn't take chances on offending. He makes Listerine antiseptic a habit. Night and morning, and before every date, Listerine is his extra careful precaution. Independent research has proven that Listerine antiseptic not only stops halitosis instantly and keeps it stopped usually for hours on end, but averaged four times better than the leading chlorophyll products against which it was tested. Halitosis is a real everyday problem. By far its most common cause is fermentation of proteins that are present in everybody's mouth all the time. The trouble is you could have halitosis and never know it, and even your best friend won't tell you. Why take chances when there's such a pleasant, extra careful precaution? Listerine, the most widely used oral antiseptic in the world. He said that she said that he had halitosis. She said that he said it's true of some girls too. He said that she said the answer was simple. Here's what she said to do. Try Listerine, buy Listerine. Keep breath fresh and clean with Listerine. Try Listerine, buy Listerine. Keep breath fresh and clean with Listerine. <laughs> What's on your mind, little man? Not a thing, old pal, not a thing. You sure are palsy-walsy all of a sudden. I've been doing a little thinking. I doubt it. No, well, I mean it. I'm a pretty lucky guy to have a swell fellow like you for a brother. Yeah, life has been good to you. <laughs> Best brother a brother ever had for a brother, brother. <laughs> what do you mean, pal? Come on, I know you're after something. How do you like that? Guy tried to be nice, and right away you think he's got an inferior motive. You're just being nice, huh? What else? I like you, David. Thanks, I think you're cute, too. You're a lady on a girl. Well, I'm kind of happy about that myself. <laughs> sure would be awful having a big sister. Wearing your old clothes is bad enough. <laughs> you don't mind having a big brother, though, do you? No, sir, boy. Especially a real smart guy like you. You think I'm a pretty smart guy, huh? Yes, sir. You think I'll ever be as smart as you, David? I doubt it. <laughs> I thought you were going to the movies. Yeah, I was. You better get going, then. I think I'll stay home with you. What's the matter? Did you spend all your money? No, I got all my money right here. Well, why aren't you going, then? I like you, David. I like you, too. You know what I always say? I always say, good old David is the salt of the earth, boy. Is that really what you always say? And then I always say, good old David is the smartest guy in town. No kidding? And then I always say... You're that... a pretty gabby little guy, aren't you? <laughs> and then I always say when it comes to fixing things, boy, that David is terrific. Fixing what sort of things? Oh, little things. Like a flat tire on my bike. Will you fix it for me? Ricky, my boy, I've got news for you. Come on, David. If you don't fix it, I can't go to the movies. Big news. Oh, come on. Good old days, Fix-It Shop Finance Company and Escort Service has gone out of business. Ozzy? Oh. Oh, hi, Harriet. What are you so worried about? Uh, I'm not worried. 
Oh, I guess I might as well tell you. Hey, right, we have a bit of a problem here. The Thornberry's little niece is visiting him, and she's been invited to a party at the Randolph's. Well, it sounds very nice. Well, yes, but Will is off on a camping trip, and the poor little girl has nobody to take her. Well, what about David? I asked David, and he politely but firmly turned me down. Well, that doesn't sound like David. That was exactly my reaction. Considering the fact that he does favors for just about everybody in school, you'd think he could do this one small one for his own father. Well, of course, if he doesn't want to, dear, it's up to him. Well, you don't understand the extent of our problem. I promised Thorny that David would take the little girl to the party. And after all, a man can't go back on a promise. You promised Thorny? Well, yes, he's my best friend. I don't think that was too much of a favor for him to ask me. Well, he wasn't asking you to take her, dear. Don't you think you should have spoken to David first? Well, yes, I, I realize that now. But I had no idea David would take my advice so seriously. What advice is that? You remember the discussion we had this morning? See, David is so darn good-natured, and he does favors for just about everybody, so they take advantage of him. Yes, I know. Well, now, Harriet, my case is entirely different. <laughs> well, I'm the boy's father, you know. Well, I didn't say anything. But evidently you did. Well, it's just that I've promised Thorny, and a promise is a promise. It's a little embarrassing to have David go back on my word. Why don't you just tell Thorny what happened? You made a date for David without asking David first, and David turned it down. Well, that'd make me look pretty silly, wouldn't it? I'm sure there's some way of explaining exactly what happened without exactly explaining what happened. <laughs> there, you work it out any way you want to. Whatever you do, though, you better do it now so they'll have time to find somebody else. I think I'll go out and see if I can find David and make just one more pitch to see if he won't do this as a special favor to me. Oh, would you mind seeing who that is at the back door, Harriet? Well, you're kidding. You know very well it's Thorny. Oh. Come on in, Thorny. Well, look, uh, why don't you see what Thorny wants, and I think I'll go outside and see if I can find David. No, you better let me go see if I can find David. Hi, Harriet. Hi, Oz. Hi, Thorny. Uh, hi, Thorny. Boy, excitement is sure running on a fever pitch at our place today. Well, I know you boys have a lot to talk about, so if you'll excuse me, please. Uh, Harriet? Boy, you ought to see little Shirley. Uh, uh, Thorny. She's so excited, she can hardly wait. I've never seen a kid so happy in all my life. It's pretty happy, huh? Oh, delirious. Well, you'd think this is the first dinner party she was ever invited to. Come to think of it, I think it is. Uh, where's David? Getting dressed, I suppose? Well, I, I really don't know where he is, Thorny. <laughs> Little Shirley could hardly wait to meet him. Why, she's even been thinking of excuses to go out in the backyard, hoping to get a glimpse of him. Uh, I'm uh, pretty worried about something, Thorny. Uh, uh, David isn't much of a dancer, you know. Well, so what? I don't imagine any of the kids are. Well, and, and then there's another thing. Maybe David isn't her type. Oh, of course he's her type. He's a boy, isn't he? <laughs> well, it's just that maybe she might prefer somebody like the little Peterson boy. Now, he's been going to dancing school and all. Oh, no, uh, she wouldn't care for him at all. You see, it's just the idea that David isn't much of a social type boy. He's a wonderful kid and all that, but he's not what you'd call a, a party man. Uh, say, wait a minute. How about little Georgie Dunkel? Well, Georgie's on the overnight trip with Will. See, I just got an idea. He's a lot younger than she is, and she's about a foot taller than he, but that Ricky always gives the girls a... a, a... <laughs> suggestion. Oh, quit worrying, Oz. Believe me, David and Shirley are going to get along together just fine. Well, I've got to be running along now. She's very anxious to model a new dress for Uncle Thorny. She even bought a new dress for the affair? Oh, certainly. This is the biggest thing in her young life. Just tell Prince Charming that the pumpkin coach will arrive for him at 6 o'clock sharp. Well, I'll see you later, Oz. Harriet. Harriet! <laughs> Oh, Harry, this is terrible. Was Thorny pretty upset when you told him? 
Well, now, you, you've got to realize, Harry, that this is a, a very delicate situation we've got here. Everybody's terribly excited about the party. The little girl's looking all over, anxious to meet David. She's bought a new dress. This is going to be a, a terribly crushing blow to the poor. Ozzy, you did tell Thorny. Oh, of course I, I, I plan to tell him. <laughs> In other words, you haven't told him yet. Well, like I say, Harry, now this is a, a very delicate situation. There are lots of different apples, uh, 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 factors in, involved that make it extremely difficult to... to uh, I chickened out. Well, dear, I know how you feel, but the longer you put it off, the harder it's going to be. I can't argue with you because you're absolutely right. The only thing I can do is just face the music and call Thorny and tell him exactly what happened. Good for you. Uh, may I have the phone, please? I don't suppose... Uh, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> this is probably the last time I'll hear old Thorny's voice. <laughs> See, maybe if I just saw David and, and spoke to him once more and, and, and pleaded with him and explained to him what a wonderful thing it would be to do this favor for, for his kindly neighbor, Mr. Thornberry, and, and his dear old dad. Say, uh, maybe I could bribe... <laughs> not bribe, I mean, maybe I could offer the boy a, a, a couple of dollars. Well, look, dear, he won't be back until dinner time. It'll be too late by then. Yeah, I guess you're right. Hello? Hello, Thorny. This is Oz. Hi, Oz. What's up? Uh, something as, uh... Hi, Mom. Hi, Pa. Oh, David, where have you been? Out back by the garage. Well, uh, sit down, son. I want to have a talk with you. Harry, will you go get my wallet? It's up on the dresser. <laughs> well, I'm speaking uh, up, Oz. I can't hear... Well, Dave, saying. remember this morning when I had a little talk with you and I explained that sometimes generosity and doing nice things for people can be overdone? Yes, sir. Well, in my anxiety not to have people take advantage of you, I think I perhaps made my point a little too strong. Gee, I'm glad to hear you say that, Pa, because I really enjoy doing favors for people. Oh, it's what? Oh, what? <laughs> Wonderful, son, because I'd like to request that you do a little favor for Mr. Thornberry and me. Yes, us. you hear voices? Well, yes. Oh, for Operator. goodness sakes, pardon me. <laughs> yes, Thorny, here I am. Well, you had me worried, Oz. What happened? Uh, uh, well, it, it's nothing Im important, Thorny. What'd you call up about? Well, I, uh, I just uh, wanted to say hello. Well, uh, goodbye, Thorny. <laughs> Is that Mr. Thornbury, Pa? Uh, yes, it was, David. Does he still want me to take his niece to the party? Well, yes, he does. Because I'd be happy to take her. Oh, that's wonderful, David. I'm sure Mr. Thornberry appreciates it, and I do, too. Well, heck, I'm glad to do it, Pa. Well, that's a fine attitude to take, son. What time am I supposed to pick Shirley up? Uh, Mr. Thornberry's going to stop by here about 6 o'clock. David, how did you know her name was Shirley? How did I know her name? Well, she was over in the Thornberry's backyard. Well, yes, but how did you know her name? Oh, that. Well, I was in our backyard, you see, and I saw this girl over in the Thornbury's backyard, and then I remembered that Will Thornbury had a pair of my old tennis shoes in his garage. So you went over to the Thornbury's backyard? Yes, sir. That's where their garage is. <laughs> well, so where Shirley was. Oh, and I suppose you and Shirley talked for a few minutes? Well, kind of. And she said to me, you must be David Nelson. Which I was. And we started talking and... Well, anyway, I'd be happy to take her. In fact, I'd be crazy if I didn't. You think it then she's a rather cute little girl? I'll say she is. I think I begin to understand this change of heart and neighborly spirit. <laughs> ah, I sure am glad I was out by the garage fixing Ricky's tire. Otherwise, I might not have seen her. Well, I'm glad it worked out well. well I wanted to tell you about it myself. I didn't want Ricky coming in here blabbing it to you. Yeah, we understand. <laughs> David, hadn't you better start getting ready now? Okay, I'll be right back. Oh, David, where are you going? You've got to get dressed. Oh, I will. First, I better let Ricky out of the garage. <laughs>
Snow White Minty Listerine Toothpaste. You never tasted such a clean, fresh, wide-awake flavor in your life. And no other leading dentifrice, no chlorophyll product, can do more for you than Listerine Toothpaste. Because Listerine Toothpaste gives you Listerine special ingredient, Luster Foam, can help your toothbrush cut down tooth decay as much as 60%. Keep your mouth clean and fresh for hours. And look at the money you save. This thrift pack gives you not one, but two big 45-cent tubes for only 59 cents. That's right, 90 cents worth of Listerine toothpaste for only 59 cents. Boy, if only you could save this much on everything you buy. No wonder Harriet Nelson says Listerine toothpaste is your best buy by far. So, buy now. Well, a sneaky trick to play on your own brother. What's the matter, dear? It's that Ricky, Mom. We gotta do something about him. He's getting to be a real wise guy. In what way? I had a pretty good time at the party last night. I was feeling fine today. So Ricky asked me if he could borrow some money to go to the show. And you let him have the money? Yeah. And then he was worried about who would do his homework if he went to the show. Oh, so you did his homework? Yeah. Then he wanted to borrow my bike to get to the show. And you let him take the bike? Yeah. All the sneaky tricks. Borrows my bike, takes my money. Well, dear, you told him he could take the bike and the money. Yeah, but I didn't tell him he could take Shirley, too. Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family, Ozzie, Harriet, David, and Ricky, will be brought to you by Hot Point Quality Appliances. Remember, look to Hot Point for the finest first. Isn't it time? Time you bought the whole family fresh, clean, new prophylactic toothbrushes. Prophylactic, of course. This world-famous line includes a style, size, and texture for every taste and need. The Pro Tufted, for example, with its special end tuft to get at those hard-to-reach back teeth. Or the new Pro 59, the totally different toothbrush with thousands of extra thin bristles. You never felt a brush so gentle yet so sturdy. Or this brush, specially sized for children's mouths. Look for the prophylactic toothbrush display at any drug counter. Ladies and gentlemen, this could be your automobile. As you can see, somebody gambled and lost. This weekend, make sure your weekend motoring is fun, not fatal. Be very careful in heavy traffic the next time you are tempted to take a chance. Play it safe. The life you save may be your own. This could be you.